Hi, this is Pat Johnson, your sociology instructor. In this mini lecture, we're going to talk about a famous sociologist by the name of Charles Horton Cooley and his concept of the looking glass self. There are many theories of socialization. Some span both sociology and psychology, particularly the area of developmental psychology. In this mini lecture, we're going to talk about just one of those theories and what Charles Horton Cooley meant by the looking glass self. The looking glass self is a concept that means the reactions we elicit in social situations create a mirror in which we see ourselves. So, a looking glass is a fancy word for a mirror. And what does a mirror do? It reflects. It reflects our image back. Charles Horton Cooley, who lived from 1864 to 1929, said that our sense of self comes from how we think other people see us. Here's a quote from Charles Horton Cooley. I am not what I think I am. I am not what you think I am. I am what I think you think I am. Other people's reflections of us and how we think about those images they have of us help create our sense of self. Let's take a look at a couple examples. In this image here, A young woman is looking in a mirror. The mirror is reflecting back to her an image of herself, except it's not a regular mirror. It's a mirror showing how people on Facebook might view her. So how others see her, in turn, is how she sees herself. So she might present herself on Facebook and in other forms of social media in such a way that it reflects back to her a positive image of herself. Up on the wall are a bunch of tests and assignments graded in red with teachers' writing and teachers' grades. Grades from teachers can reflect back to us an image of ourselves that we then internalize and becomes our self-perception. I know I remember as a student from a child those assignments, those tests that I did very well on and those that I did poorly on. They affected my self-image. Now you may be wondering why I have this image of a cleft palate in an infant. My father, who was born in 1931 during the Great Depression to a very poor family, was born with a cleft palate. He had an opening in his upper lip. Being from a very poor immigrant family during the Great Depression, the surgery that was done to close his cleft palate was not very good surgery and was certainly not cosmetic surgery. It left my father with an indentation in his upper lip that created a look that looked like a sneer. Now, my father told me when I was in my 20s that he was contemplating having um, elective plastic surgery as a middle-aged adult. He said, I want to have that scar, that indentation in my upper lip made straight. He said, I'm not looking for great beauty. I am a middle-aged man of no great looks. I just want a horizontal upper lip. He said, I've spent my whole life 
looking at people who perceived me as sneering at them and they in turn responded to me as if I was sneering at them and they treated me frankly very hostily in other words in a hostile manner he said I just want a neutral response from people I no longer want to be seen as hostile because they reflect that hostility back to me and I therefore have this image of myself as a hostile person. This is a great example of Charles Horton Cooley's concept of the looking glass self. Now, you may be sitting there thinking to yourself, well, I don't have a cleft palate, I don't engage in social media, I'm my own person, and other people's opinions of me really don't matter. Think again. No, you may not engage in social media, and you may hopefully have not been born with a clef cleft palate or an other um, deformity as an infant. But other people's opinions of us do matter more than we'd like to admit, and we internalize them, and they become part of our self-concept. That's what Charles Horton Cooley meant by the looking glass self.